Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I decided to just do the daily for today because it's kind of like around the same difficulty as what I've been doing. So this one's going to be painting a grid with three different colors. Um, and in this one you're given two integers M and N and you have an M by N grid where every cell is white. You need to paint each cell red, green, or blue. All cells must be painted. Return the number of ways to do this such that no two adjacent cells can have the same color. Okay. So essentially, yeah, you have a matrix. So here you would have, a, um, you have, you only have like one cell essentially for this first example. So you can either paint it red, green, or blue. And then in the second example, we have, we can show this. So we have this is our matrix, uh, one row, two columns. So actually like this. So basically this first cell can be painted red, green, or blue, which is three combinations. And then the second cell can only be painted uh, two combinations because it can't be the same as the first. So there's six total there. And then this third one, it's a five by five. So if we have some bigger matrix, like let's just call it this. If we want to paint this red, let's say, that means we can't paint this red or this red um, and so on. Okay. And so this one's kind of, there's a lot to do here, but the main thing you have to recognize here is it's based off the constraints, which I, which I think is like not the greatest because you basically have to read the constraints to know how to do this problem. And if you weren't given constraints and like the solution wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to come up with it essentially. So here um, we're limited to five rows and then a thousand columns. And so because we're limited to five rows only, um, we can't, like, it's very hard to just say, like, okay, I'm going to take one cell and paint it some color, like a red, let's call it. And then, like, how, like, what can I paint this guy? And if I paint this, then what can I paint this? It's kind of difficult to do that. Maybe you can do that, some kind of DP function where you have, like, a row column, you paint the first cell, and then it's like, okay, now... You have to paint this cell, but you can't paint it red. But then it's going to be hard to make the recursions. Actually, yeah, it's going to be kind of tricky because, like, when you, whenever you pick, to, whenever you choose to pick this, let's say green and this green, like these kind of have to recurse at the same time to have this constraint, right? Where like none, this can't be green, and it's not really possible with DP. So we can't just like paint one cell. So what else can we do? Well, because we're because we don't have a lot of rows, we can actually use that essentially. So we can just say, what's all the ways we can paint one column? And you can obviously calculate that, but you can also make that, right? So to calculate that would be pretty easy. Like the first cell you do three and then two and then two and so on. Um, but yeah, essentially because like, because um, our constraints are kind of small, we can essentially do this, right? So this would basically be like, like we can basically make all these things. Um, and so that's kind of the idea of how to do this is essentially we're going to say, let's just try to find all the different ways we can paint one column. And then once we do that, then we can uh, use that to figure out how to go through the rows. Actually, sorry, I think I did the opposite. Yeah, we can't. Um, yeah, so I, so I explained it a little bit wrong. So. We have five. Uh, we have five rows and a thousand columns. So because we only have five rows, no, actually that is right. Yeah. So so because we only have five rows, like each column can only be five at the most. So these rows are really long. Uh, right. Because this call this row can be like a thousand columns. And if it was a thousand, then we could we couldn't we could definitely not do all the permutations there because it'd be like three times two times two times two times two times two, times two, times two whatever, right? And that would be a thousand. But for the column, we can only have five rows. So the most the most combinations we can have for a column is just this, right? Which is like pretty small. This is like, I mean, we can figure that out, right? It's like uh, eight, 16 times three, like 50 or whatever. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, so it's kind of small. And so what we can do is we can just say like, okay, let's just get all the different columns we can make. Like what are all the different combinations we can make? Like maybe we can paint a column like, you know, red, green, red, green, like blue or something. Um, 
and this is like one. So if we get all of those, then, and we can have these in an array. So essentially like there's some number of combinations we can have, there's not that many, right? And each thing in an array will look like this. Um, and we have these in an array, then we can just say like, okay, let's just, for every, for every way we could paint, let's try to paint our current uh, column that and let's also maintain the previous column that we painted. So for example, um, let's say we painted this like this. Then we could say like, okay, well here, what if we just try to do some random, like we can just go through every combination, right? So like, what if we go like red, green, red, blue, red, is this possible? And we can check uh, pretty easily because we can just compare this to the previous one. And if any of them are the same, then we can't do it. So like here, they're the same, so we can't do it. So here, and like an example that would work would be like this, uh, blue, blue, blue or something, right? Um, and because like, like I said, these columns are only five long, we can essentially do this. So what we're gonna do is we can just have a DP function. So we're gonna have like two parts here. So first we can um, backtrack to get all like painting combinations. And there might be a way to do this with just like math without even getting them, but yeah. So essentially we're gonna get all these in an array, right? So one of them might be like, you know, red, blue, whatever, all of these. And and we can also maintain these in, in numbers. We can just have zero, one, two. So essentially like one way to paint something would be like zero, one, two, one, two or something, right? So we're gonna get all those different combinations, store those. And then we're, we can have a DP function that we're gonna say the column we're on and what, what do we paint the previous column? And we can just have this for an index. So I think some solutions said you can have a bit mask, but an index is gonna be a lot easier. So essentially we're gonna have an array of like all the different ways we can paint. And then we'll have the column we're on and plus the previous column index that we painted. And then for this current column, we're just gonna say, try to paint in every way we can. So for our all of our column combinations, we're gonna to try to paint in all of those. And then for all of those, we're just gonna check, is it is there is there any match between that and the previous? If there if not, let's let's try to do that. And so that's gonna make it like basically the rec then we can just recurse, right? So we can just recurse to DP of column plus one, and now our current column that we painted, and then that's it. And then our base case is pretty easy. Once we paint everything, um, once we paint everything, we just return one. This is like one possible thing. So yeah, you can also do this as a bit mask. I kind of did want to show this quickly because I did spend some time on this, like how to do a bit mask. Um, but uh, actually let's get rid of this, how to do a bit mask. But here, like normally with it for a bit mask, your digits are zeros and ones, but here we can have zero, one or two. So how would we do that? So there's kind of two ways. And I think in the editorial or some other place, they recommend using like two bits per thing. So this would be like the, you know, row five, row four, uh, row three, row two, row one or something. And then here you just store two bits, right? So like one zero would refer to th uh, two, one one would refer to three and so on. But the easier way to do that without like doing bit by bit is you can just, um, so normally, normally to get the last bit and to keep getting the last bit, you just like divide by two and mod by two. So here we can kind of do the same thing. So we can have a number that's zero and then we can just like, um, we can divide by two or not divide by two, divide by three. And then to get the last two bits. Yeah. So basically we could, we could mod by three to get the last two bits and we could divide by three to get rid of like the, the three thing. So essentially we'll be like, we'll have a three to the zero power. Uh, and then we'll have like a three to the one, three to the two and so on. So kind of the same thing as like binary, except in, in terms of three. And then if our numbers are represented in terms of three, then we can have a zero, one, two. So that's another way you could do with a bit mask. So you can use a bit mask to represent like how you painted. And I guess when you backtrack, you can like build up a mask, but I feel like this is a lot easier. So instead we just have an array of like, what are the colors you painted and like what, what index is that in our combinations and then just check how we paint. Um, I feel like it's a lot, like, a lot easier. So, yeah. But that's basically, that's basically the solution is like, you really have to look at the constraints and realize like, okay, for my column, it can only be five rows. So I can just pre-compute every single combination there. And then I can just try all of them and I can't do it the other way. So if this constraint was like, you know, a reverse, then you would do the, the opposite. Like if your row can only be, you know, five columns wide, then you would pre-compute all the rows. 
which is why I said like, you can't really come up with this without looking at the constraints. Cause how do you know this is five and a thousand? This could have been like 500 and 500 or whatever, in which case this would have failed. So not like not the best to ask, but yeah. So let me show you kind of what I did. I'm gonna switch to Java for a while. So, so essentially we have like all the combinations um, and we make them and then we call our backtrack function. So the backtrack function is pretty simple. Basically like as soon as we have M, which is like five at the most, then we just add our current combination to our combinations, just typical backtrack. And then while we're adding combinations, like, so while we're adding numbers, let's say, like, let's say our last number was a two, we can add anything but a two, right? So we can add a zero or a one. So, so two numbers in a row can't be the same. So we just check that here. If it's empty or if, uh, if the current number that we're picking isn't the other one, then we can do it. And then we backtrack and it removes a pretty standard backtrack. Um, and then once we get all of those, then we just make a normal cache. And I just made everything negative one to show it's not in the cache. Um, and then the way I did it is I actually said, well, let's just call DP from, from starting at row one, because we need a previous row index. And so starting at row zero, like we don't have a previous row index. I could have also added the combination of, uh, I could have also added the combination of just like putting negative ones or something everywhere, but this, this was fine too. So essentially I just said like start at row one and then the previous row is going to be every single one of these because for row one, you can paint it every single combination. So I said, start at row one, try every single combination as the previous. Um, and then for the DP function. So basically like if we're out of bounds, return one, if it's in the cache, return the cache. Um, and then if, if it's the, or whatever the previous index is, let's actually get that combination. And then for that combination, let's try every single combination possible. And if it's valid, let's recurse. And so the is valid basically just checks the previous combination and the current combination and just checks, is there any, uh, is there any cell that's the same? And if there's a cell that's the same, then it's not valid. So, so if it is valid, we're just gonna um, do the DP and then just like add every single one we can and then store in the cache and return, return. So, yeah, so it does work. Okay, so for the time and space complexity, so I can write that down here. Oops. So to make all the combinations, that's gonna be like three to the M um, for the backtrack. The cache is gonna be three to the M times N. And then this is constant. And then here, so we have, so this is, a. Uh, What's it called? Th uh, this is N, this is a uh, three of the M. So I think it's like three of the M times three of the M times N. And yeah, th that three of the M is really like 50 or whatever I said. So this is like three of the two M times N and space. So our cache is gonna be a uh, three to the M times N. Yeah, I think something like this. You can space optimize, but uh, yeah, too lazy for that. So, uh, but yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.